Okay guys, so episode one on this Mitsubishi GTO is going to be the base coat stage on the repaint. So I'm getting a bit more time to film and a bit more time to edit at the moment, but as far as trying to edit all the prep sections on one of these cars, I've just not got the time at the moment. So we will be focusing more on the paint stage, but it's going to be quite a large, you know, larger videos um, on the paint stages and we'll try and include a part three on this one as well. Because I've already edited part one and part two, um, and part three will probably be the bumpers and then the final built up car at the end for you guys to have a look at. So, this obviously a bit of an iconic old Japanese sports car, you don't see many of these GTOs around anymore. Um, a long, long, long time ago, uh, I used to work for a place when I was like, when I was a kid, not long after school, um, that imported Japanese cars, and we used to do loads of these. Um, like the GTOs, um, the Supras, which we've got one coming in soon. Um, you just don't see many of them about anymore. I can't remember the last time I saw one of these GTOs, <clears throat> but it came in. Um, at some point in its life, it's had a colour change. Um, there was quite a few issues with the paintwork on it. Um, overall, damage-wise, uh, the car was really good. Um, it's got barely any damage on it. It was just really rough paintwork. Um, a lot of flaky paint in some areas um, it did come in just originally for an external paint but because of where some of the flaky paint was especially inside these door shuts um, although I'm not painting the backs of the doors I couldn't not paint the shuts um, just because it would make it like stunning on the outside and then it would make the door shuts really rough so I'm just including the wing edges because um, it's easier to paint the bonnet off and also polish, polish the bonnet off um, and obviously drop the doors off because literally four 12 mil bolts and one wire and plug and that door straight off and then we can hang it up on a stand it makes it a little bit more it makes it a little bit easier to paint the shell <coughs> um, as well as also obviously making it a lot easier to get around these shuts and give these shuts a nice freshen up um, a lot of the shut is covered up um, a bit like an MR2 um, with rubbers and also a big sill plate but at the same time, the bits that aren't um, and the bits that are exposed, then are all nice and fresh. Um, they're all in this nice new shade of what the original, obviously, you know, what the customers asked for of this colour. Um, which I believe was Mitsubishi, um, I don't know, something or other. I know that really helps, but I'll put it down in the description um, for you guys that want to know what the colour code for this car was. Um, it's a nice colour, a um, lot of pearl to it. It's got like almost like a rainbow pearl in it you know like a multicolored pearl it's really nice <clears throat> so this whole job bar the wet and wet is capsy start to finish so once we've done all the bodywork on it and got it all stripped down um it was then done with the capsy 634 high build um personally a favorite of mine um really good high build really good value blocks really nice sprays really well and I find that these days, I used to give stuff like three coats, and now I'm giving them two really good coats, and that's enough with 1.8. Um, it's a four to one mix there, high build, with 30% thinner, and you have to make sure you put the 30% in, because it is really thick, which just makes it a better value for money, to be fair. The whole car was then blocked out with the 320, um, after the repair stage, then DA'd um, with the 400, and then we put the Novel wet on wet um, it dries to a nice matte finish as you can see um, but for me especially on a job like this it's a black car um, or I say it's a black car the color is actually classed as a dark gray because um, it is a bit of a dark gray mm, it, is, it is dark gray um, because it's got a lot of pearl on it um, so although it's classed as one colour, it's classed as black, it's technically it's got more grey in it than black, so to speak, because um, the metallics and the pearls and stuff like that in it. But anyway, sidetracked a little bit. Um, doing one with a black wet on wet, one using a wet on wet or a non-sanding primer um, or a sealer for you guys in the States does help a lot. Um, it's going to fill in all your prep scratches, it's going to cover up... Um, any of those 400 marks so from like your first coat of base coat you're not trying to fill any prep marks or anything like that you're not covering up any sanding marks you're literally painting it on a nice fresh surface 
and then using a black wet and wet with a very dark gray or a black color um, obviously makes the job a lot easier and you'll probably find that you're going to use a lot less base coat as well and I'm not saying that in the case of right well we're going to put a lot less color on the car um, we will be putting the right amount of color on that the car needs um, but because it's already black you know like you can see there that first coat is already nice and even so in essence like two well one really good heavy coat and then two drop coats on this will be more than enough because it was already black to start with and um, there's no prep marks to fill in or anything like that so it does make it a lot more efficient now for this um, for the base and clear stage actually I use the Fuji um, MPV8 it's a 1.2 I'm running this around 25 psi for the base and I run it at 2 bar for the clear the clear coat stage on the shell will be part 2 um, that's already edited up so I'll probably voice that voice that over after this one um, the I'm using um, some of the new um, Fuji analog gauges on this um, I prefer an analog gauge over a digital um, I have to be honest with you on that one I suppose I'm a little bit old school in that way I do like to be able to change it a lot faster on the fly than I do the um, than using a digital gauge um, and I just find that even you know even halfway through a panel I can just tweak the gauge and I can be painting in a matter of seconds um, with a really quick changeover now I've swapped over to these Fuji ones because after many many years my Segola one at least one if not two of my Segola ones are packed up um, so Fuji and SP supplies were um, nice enough to send me out a couple of these to try um, what I am going to do um, is I have spoke to SP supplies um, I'll leave a link to the spray gun in the description and I will also leave a code in the description of the video so if you want to take a look at one of these Fujis or you want to order one of these Fujis if you do and you use the code that I will leave down in the description then for a limited number you will receive um, a free uh, analog gauge with it it's good quality gauge um, but that's only available to my subscribers so if you're not someone watching this video and you go and buy one of these then you won't get a gauge but if you leave that in the dis in the order notes on the checkout then you will get a free analog gauge along with your spray gun now I'm running um, these Fuji's in fact all our guns these days with the SATA RPS system um, like I've said in a previous video um, we changed over to these probably now about three months ago um, like I said they're, they're a tiny bit more expensive than some but I've never had a pot failure yet um, with the Colad ones that we were using I think they're about 15 quid cheaper per box but I know I was throwing maybe five six seven um, pots away because of valve problems on the lids obviously with the way that the SATA RPS system works you don't really get any issues at all with the way that the valves work because they're just a little clip out cap um, I will do a little video um, in the near future on that system for you guys um, so you can see like the wall rack system that we've got and also you know the disposable cup system that we're using and also why we swapped over now the base coat for this again is Capsi um, this comes direct off our scheme um, it didn't take a lot um, to be fair again using this black wet and wet underneath this color really helps as far as the coverage and also filling in any prepping marks or anything like that so we used a reasonably small amount of base really um, for doing the shell and the doors and then the very next day I put in oh no actually the very next day I polished all the shell up um, it only took me a day to fully flat and polish the shell um, and we've done this to like a show finish so it's a full mirror finish on the shell, the doors, the tailgate and even these two ends of the door shuts um, that aren't covered um, I've mirror finished the door shuts out as well just to give them a little bit of a nicer look and then the day after I did all the panel work bar the bumpers and the side skirts so this thing was ready to rebuild um, the Capsi base coat again we've had this system in now for it's got to be probably about 18 months um, cost wise savings have been massive for us 
Um, if you don't know that the Capsi base coat system is a one-to-one -one system, so it's one part um, base to one part thinners. Um, a lot of people, when I've spoken to them in the past, always sort of seem to think, well, if it's one-to-one, -one, then the coverage is going to be horrendous. Um, a lot of the Capsi products are a lot thicker than everybody else's. So, although it's one-to-one, -one, um, it, it covers just as well as anyone else's two-to-one. In fact, recently, I can't remember, I think I'd run out of a tin and I had a bit of a rush job on, and I went to a local supplier um, for a quarter of a litre base coat, and I was spraying it, and the coverage and the lay down on theirs at two to one was horrendous compared to what this feels like at one to one. Um, this stuff covered twice as nice. Um, I felt like it still had more body to it. So as far as like going over, say a five hundred, um, it felt like it just completely covered those prep scratches in one go with this. Um, whereas the other stuff took me like a couple of attempts just to go over like five hundred prep scratches, which is not something that I'm used to anymore um, and even when it comes down to that clear we we use two of their main clears we use the Cap C6030 um, which is their HS clear and we also use the Cap C6050 um, this one we use the 6030 on um, recently quite a few of the repaints have been used in the 6050 but the temperature just dropped off a little bit at the moment so um, I've not used the 6050 on this one um, it doesn't really make much difference um, the 6050 I'd say I can get a, I can get a nicer lay down on the 6050 um, again I find that I have to add a touch more thinners than the spec sheet says just to make sure I can get that nice smoother lay down but for this um, it's an, just an external paint so we went for the 6030 on this um, which again is reasonably priced per kit. It sprays nice. Um, on this particular job, I did it two to one and I put no thinners in it. Um, and you'll see that stage in part two. Um, just to add a bit of build, because I wanted to mirror finish this, um, which the process for us will be a dry 1500 disc and then a wet 2000 foam pad and a wet 3000 foam pad and then we'll give it a wool compound and um, like a soft foam DA um, to finish. So I wanted to make sure there's plenty of thickness there um, and you know none of the body was going to be taken up with thinners that was going to evaporate out of it. I wasn't too fussed if it was, if the finish was amazing because um, we're going for a, more of the body of the colour um, and the thick, like the body of the clear and the thickness of the clear. But even so, um, I have to say, it came out absolutely spot on. Um, there was no issues whatsoever um, as far as the finish or anything went. So that's going to be it for part one um, on this Mitsubishi GTO. Hope you guys have enjoyed it and can join us again soon for part two. Um, again, I'm sorry if I didn't manage to get this on a premiere, um, but I've just got a lot going on at the moment. But I will see you soon for part two. Bye for now.